I'm going to show you everything you need to know to master the camera on the iPhone 15 Pro. So here we are, my iPhone 15 Pro. It differs slightly from the iPhone 15 Pro Max and of course from the iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 Plus. Let's go ahead and walk through the features starting with how to take photos. And I'm talking more than just, you know, tapping the shutter button here at the bottom. Everyone knows about that shutter button, but not everyone knows about these two located here on the side. You can actually use the volume up and volume down buttons to take photos. So watch, I'm just gonna go ahead and press the volume up button, took a photo, press the volume down button, and I also quickly took a photo. By default, if I hold this button, it's gonna start recording a video. So see I'm holding the button down, recording a video, and as soon as I let go, that video will stop. The same thing applies to the lower button as well. Start holding and a video will start to be captured. If we jump to the settings app, however, we can actually turn on used volume up for burst. So we're gonna turn that on, jump back to the camera. Now, if I press and hold the bottom button, it's going to record video, but pressing and holding the top volume button, volume up, it's gonna start capturing burst photos. Moving on, at the bottom of the screen, you can see we have four little circles, 0.5, 1, 2, and 3. Those represent the default levels of zoom, and in some ways correspond to the three lenses that are located around the back of the camera. So the 0.5 will identify with the ultra wide angle lens, give you the largest field of view in your shot. One is your primary main camera sensor, then two, this is actually two times digital zoom, kind of, but Apple calls it optical quality zoom because they're using your main sensor, but they're cropping it in for the center 12 megapixels versus the outer 48 megapixels. So it's still using the main sensor, it's still optical quality, uh, just cropping in that larger sensor. Then three times zoom is gonna be the telephoto lens located there on the back. That's going to give you your most optical zoom on your phone and you can tap on any of them to move between them. New with the iPhone 15 series, Apple allows you to adjust the default focal distance for your primary sensor. So I can choose one, which is just your standard 24 millimeter. Tapping in again, we'll go to 1.2 times zoom. That's going to be your 28 millimeter, or tapping again, 1.5 times crop on there, which will be equivalent to a 30 five millimeter focal distance. You can set that default, including here inside of the settings. Apple allows you to turn on or off the 28 and 35 millimeter options and choose which one you default to, 24, 28, or 35 millimeter, one, 1.2, or 1.5 times zoom. Finally, for adjusting the scope or moving between your different zoom levels, you can pinch on the screen, but honestly, it's a little annoying and it can be really hard to kind of keep your phone steady when you're pinching. What's a little bit easier is sliding your finger here at the bottom. Now you can just easily zoom in and out as much as you need to. It's very easy to do and it automatically jumps to these pre-built options. So you can go to like one, one, two, one, five, all of those, your two, your three times, and you can get all the way up to 15 times digital zoom here on the iPhone 15 Pro. Of course, you can go further on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but here we're focusing on the iPhone 15 Pro. Once you're done adjusting your zoom levels wherever you want it to be, you can let go and the wheel will automatically close itself or you can just pull down on it to dismiss it that way. And again, tapping on any of these numbers to go back to the default options. Similar to holding the volume up and volume down buttons, you can also quickly do actions by using the shutter button. And I'm not again talking about just tapping it to take a photo. If you tap and hold, it's gonna automatically start recording a video. Though when it is recording a video in this mode, it is a lower resolution than actually switching into video mode. Once you let go of that shutter button, it will stop recording that video. However, if you tap and hold and move it to the right, you can lock it into video mode. It's now going to continue recording that video, as you can see there on top, until I tap on that red square. While you're in video mode, here using quick take or in the actual video mode, you're gonna notice that white circle on that bottom right hand corner. You can tap that at any time and it just took a still frame shot of your video. So you're recording something, you wanna get a photo of that particular moment, tap on that circle and you're gonna get a video and a photo of what you recorded. That said, it won't be a live photo so it won't move by any means, but you still will have the video of course in your camera roll. If we take that shutter button and pull immediately to the left, that's gonna start doing burst photos. So tap and hold for video, tap and hold for video, tap and hold, pull to the right to lock video, or pull to the left and start capturing burst photos. 
Finally, one last thing. While we are recording a video, you actually can move your finger up and down to zoom in and out. Really neat little trick that I even recently found out. So just another cool thing, all these different gestures here hiding inside of the camera app. There's so many controls inside of the camera app that you may not even notice that are here. For example, in the top left hand corner, you're going to see a lightning bolt. That's to turn the flash from auto to off. So you can see, see turning it on or off or auto and then off. Uh, it's going to highlight in yellow when it actually goes to turn on. But by default, you know, we're, we're nicely lit here in the studio. So it's not going to be used. On the far right hand side, you're going to see the option for live photos, a bunch of concentric circles. Turn that on or off. I love live photos. I always recommend using them, especially for kids and for pets who capture, capture more of the moment, though it takes up a little bit more storage space. Now, you notice if we cover up this, make it a little bit dark, you can see that option. So that's for night mode will appear. You can turn that on or off if that ever appears there. But again, in well-lit scenarios, that will not appear. By the way, if you've been wondering what case I've been using on my phone throughout this video, it happens to be our sponsor, Magback. Magback makes these great, sleek, 360 degree protective cases that have this awesome soft touch to the outside. But what I especially love is the 22 embedded magnets that do a lot more than just support MagSafe. So of course they do support MagSafe, so you can use any of your favorite MagSafe accessories, you know, monitor stands, finger grips, chargers, uh, mounts, anything like that. But it also works with what MagBack calls the MagStick. So each of the cases comes with one of these in the box. And this is pretty cool. This mag stick has an adhesive on the back that allows you to mount it basically anywhere and turn it into a magnetic mount for your phone. There's all these spots on the back for it so you can go towards the top. You could mount your phone upside down. Even works horizontally that way or that way. So you can basically mount your phone in any which direction. There's so many places that you can stick this thing. I mean, put it in your car and you got a de facto car mount. Put it in your shower and you can watch TikTok videos while you wind down for the day. Uh, you could even mount this on your kitchen cabinet and make a great spot to place your phone while you're prepping, you know, your nightly meals. There's so many options. Plus, even without the mag stick, there's magnets in the back of this case that allow you to mount it basically anywhere onto almost any metal surface. So onto your fridge, boom, you can stick it up there. I even use it to connect to my AC system while I was working and turned the torch light on. So I had like a little flashlight, just my phone magnetically mounted there. It was fantastic. Aside from just cool magnetic cases that do more than any of the other magnetic cases, they also have great MagSafe wallets available. So there's like a brown leather one, there's a black Napa leather one, and a Safiano leather one if you like that style. They are really easy to use, connect really strong to the back of your phone, have a little adjustable finger grip there in the back so you can like hold on to your phone and the wallet all at the same time. And you can hold up to three cards on the inside. Really nice, sleek, magnetic MagSafe wallet from MagBack. So thank you again to MagBack for sponsoring this video. Guys, show them some love because it's without sponsors like them, uh, you know, this channel couldn't exist. So thank you again, MagBack. Now let's get back to some more tips and tricks for the iPhone camera. If we tap on this carrot here in the center, we're gonna pull up more controls here at the bottom. First again is the flash. Tapping here, we have more options than above. So we have flash auto, which is what we have control over. Then we have on to force the flash to be on, or we have flash off. So on, auto, or off. Then we have live photos again, auto, on, or off. Next is our photographic styles. So these look kind of like filters, but we have standard, we have rich contrast, we have vibrant, we have warm, and we have cool. Any of these you can set and they can be like the default look for your photos and they can also be changed. So I can adjust the tone on any of these. I can adjust the warmth here on the vibrant one. Whatever you want to adjust, if you ever need to, you can tap on this button to reset it back to its default options. And yeah, now we can automatically apply that photographic style anytime we're taking a photo. Next on the list is our aspect ratio between 4.3 square and 16 by 9. The 4.3 is your typical photo aspect ratio. We have our exposure adjustments. You can side this up or down to adjust the exposure in an image. We have our timer option, so off 3 seconds or 10 seconds. And then finally, we have any filters. These can also be applied after you shoot the photo. A bunch of different ones here, but these can again all be applied inside of the Photos app. 
One thing I want to mention about the exposure, you can actually tap on the screen to focus something, but if you slide your finger up and down, you can also adjust the exposure that way too. So you have multiple ways to adjust that exposure, and again, you can change your focus. So tapping on like my uh, fingers here maybe in the foreground versus that plant there in the background. Of course, there's these different modes here at the bottom, things like photo, portrait, panorama mode, and there are all the video modes like video, cinematic, slow-mo, and time-lapse that you can get to just by swiping left or right here inside of the app. But there's also kind of other modes for photos too. For example, the night mode that I talked about will automatically enable, as you can see there, when it is very dim. When it's enabling night mode, it'll automatically adjust how long that shutter needs to be open, though you still have control over it if you prefer. So when it goes into that night mode and you open up these controls here at the bottom, you can go to the night mode option that would show up and then you can adjust the duration on it. So you see here, we can expand that, you know, up to maybe 30 seconds or so if your phone is still and it's very dark. So that's only going to show up when it is dim enough to need those night mode photos. When you're taking photos of maybe like objects, you can automatically move it to portrait mode here and we can jump between one, two, and three times zoom. This is really neat for this phone specifically. On the iPhone 15 Pro Max, Apple jumps you all the way up to five times and you lose that three times for a portrait mode and I really like having it. I think it's a really nice thing to be able to shoot in. Now, if we're shooting an object like this plant or this HomePod, you can put it into this portrait mode manually, but if you're shooting a photo of a kid, a, an adult, uh, a baby, a dog, or a cat, it'll automatically now capture that depth data from regular photo mode. So for example, here's a photo I took of my son, uh, just regular camera, I didn't put it into portrait mode. But we have this new icon here that has like the F stop, the, the aperture, as well as live. And if I pull this from the drop down, I can watch it as a live or a portrait. So I'm cap capturing both pieces of information. So there's the live video from it. Or if I want it to be a portrait, I can turn on the portrait, as portrait aspect and I can go ahead and blur the background. So if I hit adjust here or edit, I can go here. I can change like the lighting on Harrison. I can go here and blur that background more or less depending what I want. So it gives you both options, live photos and portrait with a single shot. One of my favorite features here with the iPhone 15 Pro. Then there is macro mode. So we're gonna bring this again close to the camera here, get it really close, like an inch away from it. You can see macro mode has automatically been enabled because I'm really close to the camera. You can turn this off though, though we're not gonna be able to focus here since we're so close. So you can toggle macro mode on or off manually, but allows you to get, I mean, I'm less than an inch away from the camera and this is all in focus. Oh my gosh, I'm basically touching the lens now uh, and all in focus using macro mode. So you don't need to do anything but leave it in photo mode and bring something close and macro mode will enable automatically. Before looking at the video aspects, I want to point out a few different settings that I think you should know about. So first, let's look at format. By default, I leave it in high efficiency. It takes up the least space on your device. Um, and it'll automatically convert when you do share it with someone if they don't support that high efficiency format. I also shoot in 24 megapixels. You can drop it to 12, but I like shooting in 24. Finally, you can turn on Pro Raw and Resolution Control. So if we turn this on, and again, it gives you different options here, basically the full HIF Max up to 48 megapixels, Pro Raw at 12, or Pro Raw Max at up to 48. I do like shooting in Hyf at 48, but if we go back to the camera application, you can see we have a new option here in the top right hand corner where I can choose between Hyf Raw uh, and turn that on or off. So basically I can turn it on in settings, then toggle it per photo here inside of the camera app. Back in settings, a couple other things to note. Uh, preserve settings means every time you jump into the camera app, it's gonna remember what mode you were on and all those settings you did. The volume up for burst that we took a look at already. Um, we have the grid and level turn off. Those are independent controls. So I like having the level on to keep sure that photo is level. It's gonna automatically appear on the screen. You can see it there. And once I do kind of lock it in as level, it'll go and turn yellow for me and then disappear out of frame. So I like having the level on, but the grid is also helpful. You can mirror that front camera and view outside the frame, which kind of shows what's going on here at the bottom uh, when you are looking at something through the lens. You can change your photographic styles here as well as in the camera app. Portraits in photo mode, you can toggle on or off, and you can prioritize faster shooting, which is what I do. 
let's look at video mode on the iPhone 15 Pro. So of course at the bottom we can choose between our different modes. Basic is video mode, then we have cinematic mode which is essentially portrait mode but for video, then we have slow-mo and time lapse. Besides these, there is also something known as action mode. You can see we have a new icon here at the top, which is like a little man running. That is action mode. This is going to give you the most stable footage. So if you're chasing your kid in the yard, you're playing with your dogs, this will stabilize so much of your footage. It's incredible how good action mode is. But it can only shoot at a lower resolution, so you won't get as full 4K resolution, so only use it when you need to. Talking about resolution, here in the top right hand corner you can see we're shooting right now in HD 30, so 1080p, 30 frames per second, but I can tap that, switch it to 4K, we can also switch our frame rate, uh, there's 30, 60, 24, various options for frame rates there, just moving between all of those here directly from the camera app without having to move back to settings. Coming soon with iOS 17.2, we also have a new option to shoot in spatial video for Apple Vision Pro. This can be enabled, and then when we go back into the camera app, it has a new option when we are shooting video. So it's this icon here in that lower corner. If I turn the phone sideways to shoot inside a video, I can toggle that on. Now, it will need you to move you know, farther away from a subject here, and it needs sufficient light to be able to do this, but it's going to capture 3D video using multiple cameras there on the back to capture this 3D video that can be viewed inside of Apple Vision Pro. If I try to move this back vertical, it won't work because those cameras have to be aligned horizontally, um, and Apple even changed the arrangement on these phones to enable that. So just a couple things to keep in mind when shooting for Vision Pro. Video settings to take a look at. First, recording video. Uh, there's the formats that we talked about up here. We can also turn on or off HD video, so or HDR video. I oftentimes turn this off because sometimes it can be a hassle when editing between HDR and SDR video clips, um, but HDR does look really good, but that's why you can see when I'm like jumping to the camera app right now, it's very bright, like it, or at least in video mode, everything gets brighter because it's shooting in HDR and just captures a lot more information. So if we go back into settings, we can turn HDR off. It makes editing sometimes a little bit easier, but if you're just viewing on your phone, TVs, and sharing, it is no big deal by any means, and you can leave HDR. HDR on. Otherwise, we have auto FPS, you know, locking cameras, um, all these things. Not much else that I would recommend changing. Those are just the main ones that I would take a look at. There also is under recording video, we can turn on, sorry, not recording video, but under formats, you can turn Apple ProRes on for this, which is similar to Apple Pro Raw. So turn on ProRes, go back into the video app and there will be an option to turn ProRes on or off up here and action, move has, action mode has moved to that right hand side. So you can turn that on when you need to and turn it back off. Really quick, just touching on cinematic mode. Like I said, it's basically portrait mode, but for videos. So if I have something here in the foreground and I put something like this HomePod here in the background, I can change what's in focus. So right now it's the HomePod and then I can move up here to the plant. And as you record, you can do that so I can kind of pan the shot in this comes in, now this is in focus, and as it goes away, you know, pulls back up here to the plant. And once I'm done recording and I go here into the Photos app, you can adjust everything about this clip. So I can tap on Edit, I can change where it is in focus, and those little dots kind of change where focus is. At any point, I can adjust it myself, so I can move it back up here to the plant. You can change how much background blur there is, just again, like with portrait mode, more blur, less blur, change the object tracking, all of that. Cinematic mode, very cool, here on the iPhone 15 Pro. One last thing to mention about the iPhone 15 Pro and its camera is the action button. You can actually program the action button to automatically launch the camera wherever you are. Now, if we go into settings, you can see we have a bunch of different options for the action button, but on the camera here, you can choose to jump directly into photo mode, selfie mode, video mode, portrait mode, or portrait selfie. So whatever you take the most of can be directly tied to that action button. So if we go ahead and put it onto maybe a portrait, or how about we go over to a selfie, just like that. Now, if I press the action button and hold, hey, look, there's my camera setup. There you go, quickly, easily jump into your different camera modes using the action button on the iPhone 15 Pro. So that does it. That is how to master the camera. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments and thank you again to Magback for sponsoring this video.